I really started my photography career documenting British punk mods, skinheads, and I basically photographed everybody from The Clash to Boy George, to Jam, the Sex Pistols, you name it, I got to photograph it. But I've always loved music. You know, music's always been really important to me, so it seemed like a really good segue. I've been shooting a lot of bands for Melody Maker, um, which was a weekly music magazine, and I went to A&M Records, and art director at the time said to me, oh, I have this punk, new punk group, they're called The Police, would you like to do their album cover? And I was like, oh, that's great. And I looked at my, I was been shooting with a Nikon before, and I was like, oh, album cover, that's square, I need to get a square format camera. So, you know, I was living in a sort of squat at the time in South London, I took all my savings, everything I had, and bought my very first Hasselblad. And in those days, you know, we didn't have hair or makeup or stylists. It was just the art director, me, and the band. I didn't even have an assistant. I'm shooting them in a tunnel under, sort of right, right by where Waterloo Bridge is. You know, I developed the film, and then I made prints in my darkroom, and those prints became the first police album cover. Just coincidentally, I was coming to New York for Christmas, and when I got off the train on West 4th Street, you know, there's a kid with a boombox on his shoulder and the train's all covered in graffiti, and I was like, this is really great. I just want to be here, so. Somehow being in New York was very exciting. It has a certain sort of energy to it that you don't have in London. You know, I ended up meeting people who work for Paper Magazine, and working on you know, their first five years of the paper. You know, so that was a startup and that was exciting. You know, people are different here. I think a lot more is possible. Uh, I was still working for the British magazines while I was here because they knew I'd moved here and so they wanted, they were very curious about what was going on with this new hip hop thing. And they were like, oh, we hear there's this whole hip hop thing going on in Brooklyn and Queens and we want to do a big story on it will you shoot it? So they gave me this phone number, which I called, and it turned out to be um, Jam Master Jay's mom. All right, and he gets on the phone and he's like, oh yeah, come out and take pictures of us. I'll meet you at the Hollis uh, subway station. So I went out to, the, to Hollis like a few days later on the subway, no assistants, no art directors, just me, my Hasselblad, and I had all the backs loaded up and my light meter. And there's uh, Jay, and he meets me, and we walk along the street. And it's like this beautiful tree-lined street, you know, really kind of nice. And I walk down, and there's a bunch of guys standing, and they just look so great, you know. And it was like springtime, and there was like dappled sunlight coming through the leaves. And I was like, and they were like, what do you want us to do? And I was just like, just stand there. You look amazing. So within, I would say, the first four shots on my you know, 120 back, I got that shot. And it's a strange thing. It sounds really strange, but when you take an amazing shot like that, somehow you, there's almost like a physical feeling. You get like a little chill, like I know this is a good shot. The shot is actually a very complicated shot to print in the dark room because you've got dark faces, white sneakers, <laughs> you know, dappled sunlight. It's really hard. And I just kind of thought, well, just to make sure you keep shooting a few more. But I don't, even to this day, even with digital, I don't shoot a lot of images. I try not to, because I feel like if you're doing a shoot, you should be able to know when you've got the shot or when you have something good enough. 